Hey guys, hope you all are having a great day. Um, in today's video, we're going to be speaking about what I call the problem, um, which is why can some people very easily and very quickly get dropshipping results like these, while the majority, and if you're watching this, probably you, um, are struggling to get these kind of results, or so even struggling to make your first sale. Now today, I'm pretty much going to go ahead and show you some products. Um, I'm going to show you kind of the research behind it, and then I'm going to go ahead and fill out this actual mind map, diving into it. All right, so make sure that you take notes, do whatever you have to do, and I hope it helps you get these exact same results or even better. Right, so I'm not going to do any fancy intro or anything else. I pretty much just want to get into the main thing here. The first thing that I think a lot of people know but don't seem to take much notice of is um, it is hard to get someone to buy to buy from a nobody. Okay, now what do I mean by this? I mean, if it is something like a toothbrush, okay, no one is going to buy a toothbrush from some website which they've just seen on their phone while they were on the train. There is no point. People know that they can go and get a toothbrush or anything else from an Amazon. All right. So you have to remember you are competing with Amazon. Let me zoom in a little bit. Right. So it is very, very hard to get someone to enter their car details to give you their money because reality is no one's ever heard of you. Okay. No one's ever heard you, seen you, you know, you don't have the same branding element. Um, and I'm not going to get too much into this. I think I've spoken about it before, but essentially the main thing here is you need to choose a product, all right, which you cannot buy in store. So you cannot sell pots and pans. You can't sell toothbrushes. Uh, you can't just sell plain t-shirts and stuff because people can go to Amazon's, People can walk down the street and people can buy it from there. They're not going to buy it from you. So if you're selling any type of product which fits this description um, and fits this problem, or even if you're operating in a niche which can only really have this problem, you need to change it. Okay. The next thing is going to be product, product market fit. Okay. What does this mean? Okay. This thing has got to do with another strategy, which I'm actually going to put over here, called the Blue Ocean Strategy. Okay. Now, let me first explain this a little bit, and then this will make more sense. The Blue Ocean Strategy essentially has got to do uh, with sharks and the ocean. Now, if you've heard of this before, that will make tons of sense. Uh, if not, just give me five seconds for the other people that don't. Essentially, if you've got an ocean of sharks, okay, the sharks are you, the people trying to get the money, and the fish are the consumers, the people paying for stuff. If there's tons of sharks, okay, trying to get the same thing, you're going to have an ocean full of these big sharks, and they're going to go and eat all the fish, um, and all the fish are going to bleed, and then the ocean's going to be red and full of blood, okay? So you do not want a red ocean. I'm going to put it here. You do not go for a red ocean. You want only a blue ocean, okay? Now, a blue ocean is kind of the opposite to that. There's tons and tons of fish and not very many sharks, okay? At this point, it is very, very hard to say that I'm the only one trying to sell my product or I'm the only one trying to do whatever I'm doing. The world's a very big place. With the access to internet, everyone is competing with everyone. So that doesn't really make sense. But you can go for things where not everyone is trying to sell it. Not everyone is trying to sell the same things and shove the same thing down everyone's throat. As soon as you get a blue ocean, it is much, much easier for you to, number one, this product, this problem won't exist because if you're selling something which is in a blue ocean, chances are people like Amazon, big retailers, big stores down the road are not going to have it. Okay, and I'll show you some examples now. Uh, don't worry about that. In fact, let me just show you the one straight away. Um, here. This is a phone case, but it's a phone case which can hold your credit cards in the back um, and then it closes on top of that. So it's got the protection of a phone case, um, but it has a actual card holding the back of it. Now, tons and tons of people are trying to sell this product at the moment. Okay, So I would not recommend going and sell this. As you can see, it's 31,000 orders. This would be an example of a red ocean. Okay, there's too many people trying to sell it. Everyone knows about it by now. There's too many sharks trying to go for the little fish and all the fish which 
could buy this or would want to buy this have probably already been eaten up. All right, so this is a bad, bad example of a blue ocean. This is a red ocean. You want to find something similar to this, something completely new, no one's heard of, but has not gone viral yet. Okay, that leads me into the next thing that I was talking about, which is the product market fit. Okay, so what does this mean? Understand your market and then make sure that your product fits it. So for example, this has got to do with things like being evergreen, being evergreen, um, and then being a hype product. Now, straight away when I speak about something that is evergreen and hype, I think a lot of people lose me there in what I'm talking about. Very, very simple. The best example that I actually have for you here is acne cream and fidget spinners. Okay? Acne cream is an evergreen product and fidget spinners are a hype product. What does that mean? Let me actually show you from Google Trends, I'll actually show you the graphs. This is acne cream. So over the past five years, you can see it trends up and down, trends up and down, trends up and down, trends up and down. There's always movement in the graph. Now let me show you fidget spinners. Look at that. That is a, from that to that to that is an insane difference. Okay. What is the, what is the main thing here? Acne is an ongoing problem. Every generation has it. Pretty much every human I'm sure has had it and will continue to have it unless we come up with something really revolutionary which then stops it but that would kind of kill the market. That's a different problem. Um, but here, if you wanted to sell something around acne cream, you could be fairly certain that every single day a new person will be in demand for something that will fix their acne. Okay, And you've got the results here that show it. Over the last five years, every single day, someone has been searching for it, trying to get it. Um, it's an evergreen market, meaning there's always consumers there. Fidget spinners, on the other hand, had nothing. Zero, literally zero. Then they had a massive spike. Okay, So the other graph doesn't even have a big of a spike. All right? But then look at the drop meaning this was something that was hype. So in the moment, everyone wanted it, everyone was buying it, massive, massive hype, and then it pretty much collapsed, and then no one cared about it anymore. These are what you do not want to sell in. If you catch the trend right on it, fine. Maybe the little beginning part, you can set up a store and you can do really, really well. The problem here is once you start getting big trends like this, you start running into the second problem again, which is big retailers then decide, hold on, that makes sense, let me go sell it. So then Amazon gets things like fidget spinners. And then the consumer who you're trying to sell to is going to be thinking, why do I need to buy from this weird brand when I can just buy from Amazon, okay? So you do not, you do not want to be selling in these hype markets. You want to make sure that your product fits some form of evergreen market, okay? The next thing that I want to talk about is understanding um, the, easiest, the easiest ways to sell. Okay, I see a lot of people coming up with like some revolutionary product and you know they're trying to sell in some niche where like no one's ever heard of it and because they're trying to be different to everyone else because what happens when you combine this with this and with this you come to the conclusion that okay I need to sell something completely different and that's not wrong um, but you need to remember that the main ways that people buy are through love okay it's very very easy to sell through love, um, through making making life easier. That's another great way. Accessories, because people are constantly buying things to make their other things uh, more important because people get bored. So if I buy a brand new iPhone, okay, that's a very expensive accessory. But once you've had it for two, three years, you get bored of it but you still, need to use it, you still need to use it every single day. So people will buy an accessory which will make their existing accessory a lot more entertaining for them. Okay, and that goes back to this. This is an accessory to an already existing expensive phone. Right? This is an iPhone, but I'm sure you get it for other phones as well. Um, but this is a big problem. People need their phones and they need their cards every single day. Okay? But People have had it every single day for a long time. People get bored, okay? So accessories, meaning if you want to sell something like this, which is an accessory, it needs to be something interesting. 
you cannot sell a phone case. Like, I see lots of people trying to sell phone cases. If you're just selling a plain phone case, most likely people are not going to buy it because they know there's a million places locally that sell phone cases. They can probably find the same thing or something different everywhere else on the internet. And it's a little bit boring because it's a phone case. This, however, is very interesting. It's very different and no one at the time had seen it before. So it makes much, much more sense. The same thing when I spoke about love, for example, Valentine's Day. This product here, um, it's not this exact one, but I know a couple of buddies of mine which are doing really, really well with this. So this is a winning product. Now Valentine's Day has just passed. Um, it's like little roses, it's like little, if you can't see it, it's little roses which make up a teddy bear. If someone doesn't have a girlfriend or is not in a love boyfriend, um, or is not in like a love saga, meaning maybe it's their, their parents' birthday or whoever else's birthday, you have access to all of that on Facebook. You can target people by if it's someone in their family or very, very close circle's birthday, um, or if it's their girlfriend, their wife's birthday, if they even have a wife or a girlfriend, you can target all of that on Facebook. So I see a lot of people trying to choose this product and then showing it to people which don't have anyone to give this to, it doesn't exactly make much sense to me, okay? Making life easier is another thing. This is essentially boils down to solving a problem, okay? Your product needs to solve a problem. If your product doesn't solve, oh, my keys again. If your problem doesn't solve a problem, you're just not gonna be able to sell. Why would people buy a product which doesn't solve a problem if they're gonna pay a lot of money for it? Okay, so the greatest example of this is kitchen stuff. If you search kitchen on AliExpress and you filter it by orders, the kitchen niche generally is very good because lots of people are passionate about it, most people have a kitchen, um, and a lot of the stuff in the kitchen industry are really expensive when it doesn't need to be. But this shows you perfectly. If I go here and see what has been ordered the most, you will see that everything that comes up, you don't need. Okay, like this thing that goes in your cupboard to hold your spices, you don't need that. You could have all your spices literally lined up on the floor if you don't even have a table. It would still do the exact same thing. The difference is it makes life easier. It's the same thing here. You don't need, let me just zoom in, you don't need one of these things by your sink. You could put that on the side, or you could not even have it, but because it sits there and it makes your life easier, people will buy it. If you solve a problem and you're making someone's life easier, then there is a need for someone to buy it. Okay. Now, I'm probably going to have to go a little bit more detail into each one of these um, in existing videos moving forward. But just to give a bit of a recap, you should kind of, when you think about choosing a niche and choosing a product, number one, I would choose a product before you choose a niche. So think, have a think about what product can I come up with which is evergreen, okay? So it's not something that's just riding off like a hype, okay? It's something which solves a problem that everyone has over prolonged periods of time. Acne was the example that I gave you, okay? Is it something that people can buy just down the street? Okay, so that means that you need to go search on AliExpress and you need to search on Amazon and you need to search on Google Trends and you need to really dive into product research and be looking at things like is what I'm trying to sell available everywhere else and if so, has it failed or succeeded because of a certain reason? Then you'll know if you're on the right track or not. Then you also need to ask yourself Am I in a blue ocean? Now the best way to do this in e-com specifically is go search on Facebook. Whatever product or niche you're trying to sell, search on Facebook and see what other advertisers people are trying to push through. All right? So if you have a product, I guarantee you if I search this, um, this phone case on Facebook, there will be a million different posts by a million different pages, most of which are probably drop shippers. And if I actually find the ads, there will probably be millions of ads. So you want to be looking for a blue ocean. Then you want to ask yourself, how am I going to phrase the way I try and sell this product? Am I appealing to making someone's life easier and solving a problem? Is it an accessory to an already existing product which they have and that they've invested a lot of time or money into? Or is it love? And then the last one that I forgot to put here is vanity or self-worth. Right? I'm just going to leave it as vanity. This goes back here to the acne. 
Why is acne an evergreen market? Because people, for the longest times, have always had vanity. If you can kind of push it across to someone that you will make, you know, you'll make them look better, like the teeth whitening stuff, that just hammers on the vanity um, aspect of selling to humans. Once you understand these concepts, the other thing is en envy. If you can try and sell something which appeals to someone's envy, um, that's why Rolexes do so well. It's not just the watch, it tells the time. It's more the, the envy of wearing that. It's a symbol of wealth and success. That's why it's doing so well. So I would really recommend that you go do some deep diving into the psychologies behind why people buy. Um, I've only given you a few which I think are the easiest to find products um, on AliExpress and stuff. Um, and just as a good head start. But ultimately, to solve this problem, I think you need to really understand that you need to be selling products that not everyone else is selling. Okay, that's the main thing. Number two, you need to be making sure that you are hitting all of these things. Then just make sure that your store is decent, your ads are decent, and your product is priced right, and you should be winning. If you've done all of this, you've got a product which you've tried, um, shoot me a DM on Instagram privately, Tell me what's the store, what's the product, what have you tried, um, and I'll see if I can try and help you either get it to be working or at least just explain to you why, you know, either this is a really dumb idea or this is because it hasn't worked. Um, send that over to me and I'll be happy to help. Otherwise, guys, thanks for watching. A um, little bit of a shorter video, I think, today. Um, if you're not already, make sure to subscribe and I will see you in tomorrow's video.